So today's video is going to be about detailing terrain. The first thing you're going to want to do is get your grass, right? Now instead of getting bone meal, don't get bone meal. Bone meal's the worst. The way to actually detail your terrain or put down the grass is to just do this, right? About five blocks apart from each other each don't don't do it specifically because then it's just going to be a grid like pattern and it's going to look worse if you just do it like this randomly putting it around it's going to give it a wild look and it's going to make it look like it's definitely grown but it's not going to look so busy that's why bone meal is bad i used to think it was good it's not good this is probably the best way to detail your terrain or at least adding grass very simple very easy and very effective so once you're done with that you're going to want to use your tall grass in a somewhat similar way but also kind of in the opposite way what you're going to do is instead of putting a small amount like one every five blocks or something like that you're going to put three or something like that a small number in a small area so a larger number of these in a smaller amount of areas. These are just going to be like little hordes of tall grass, right? You don't have to do a specific number, just a small amount, something like that. Change in height makes it look more realistic and frankly just makes it more interesting to look at too. So tall grass, I don't know, tall grass is good. You like it. But just a suggestion, put tall grass closer to the edges or at least more at the edges. Don't, don't, I mean, putting them in the middle or in the center, closer to the center is very important too. But after tall grass, the flowers. Now flowers work in a very similar way to grass. Basically all you gotta do is a small, big, bigger horde than the long grass, tall grass, but definitely not a massive one. Things like that would work. And they don't have to be like a circle, they could be a triangle, a line. They could literally just be a straight line, except not actually straight, because if they are actually straight, then it, it'll it'll just look too symmetrical, too like handmade, I guess. And don't, don't be afraid to use as many types of flowers as you want. In fact, the more types of flowers you have sometimes, and I say sometimes because there, there are definitely situations where too many types can uh, distract you too much the better it will look. And you can see right here, I'm very terrible at doing this, but it looks better than it would normally with just flowers thrown randomly. It is a bit harder than I make it sound because you still have to make it look natural. You still have to make it look like it's supposed to be there and that it was done by nature and not a human, but it is kind of difficult so if you mess up on your first try or if it takes you a bit to get down don't worry it's just it's just a, a sense of feeling to do that it's not as easy as some people may make it seem but a quick little tip to break these things up a bit more mix in flowers with similar color colors specifically when you're using big ones like the sunflowers you can throw in the dandelion too sort of make it look like it's the same flower just one is bigger and this works with uh with poppies and rose bushes too as you can see they're pretty much the exact same thing the exact same color all that but there's a different height and it makes it look way more natural than it would normally and it's done in game too like this is how it's done in game i didn't actually know that until like just a few seconds ago no joke but that's how it's done in the game too. And that makes it look way more professional. Now then, next thing you wanna focus on is going to be leafage, bushes, vines, things like that. So, bushes. In 1.17, flowering azalea leaves were added. This gives us the ability to add flowering to bushes. Now bushes can be made fairly easily. All you gotta do is take your leaves and then kind of like make a shape with them. It's not difficult at all and you can see right here I've just made a good bush in possibly three seconds. Now you can put more detail into them and you can focus on them more. 
it could make it look better by surrounding them with grass, but it's not necessary in any way, shape, or form. It's just a little detailing trick, I guess. But onto vines. This is where this stuff comes in handy. This is where this is fun, right? And you don't just grab vines and start... Okay, I'm doing this with one hand, don't judge me. And you don't just grab vines and start placing them down. It does work, but it doesn't work the greatest. What you want to do is you want to take leaves, definitely add some uh, flowers in there if you want to. It makes it look way more realistic, way more interesting. And you just start doing things like this. You can add a little like bush at the bottom if you want to. That does make it look more like it's a uh, like it has roots, like it has a reason it's there specifically. But it, it nothing's necessary. Doing things like this, this is actually one of the more enjoyable things when it comes to terraining. This is what I like the most about it. But you can see that already, with just a few things that we've done, this already looks so much better. And you can do more to these things. In fact, let me get those stuff up. Using just cobblestone, and mossy cobblestone, you can change this into something way better. And it's really simple too. All you gotta do is surround a bit of this in mossy cobblestone, even make like its own path. It can make its own path. It can do whatever it wants, right? You just do that. And you might think, well, it's kind of a bit of a harsh texture difference and color difference. That's what the normal cobblestone is for. Since normal cobblestone and normal stone sort of fit in well when it comes to coloring, but the texture difference fits in well with mossy cobblestone, it definitely breaks it up really well. And it makes it look like it's sort of a crack, right? It does also work really well with just surrounding this stuff. You gotta leave breaks, obviously, you don't want the whole thing to be surrounded, and it shouldn't be just like perfectly even across the whole thing. We're trying to make it look natural, and symmetry is obviously not a very natural thing. Make sure to keep it at least a little bit thin, because you don't want it to look super thick. But even then, this is an incredible improvement. Like, it may not look super great in some cases. It does, it definitely could take a bit of effort to get looking right. But if it does look right, it looks right. Like. And just because I said you shouldn't use vines as vines, it does not mean you cannot. In fact, now that I think about it, that's a stupid rule. Go ahead and use vines as vines. Though I would, I would suggest putting string around them so they don't grow any further. As you can see, what we just did with that has made this so much more interesting. And in fact, using possibly 1.17's greatest block, you can blend this in to sort of ease the transition between stone and, and grass. You can see here that adding that moss has really made this easier to look at. And when I say really, I mean like really, really. And keep in mind that you should be coming up with your own ideas too. If you think of something that might work, or even if the odds of it working are low, try it anyways, because there is still a chance that it could be amazing. Now then, trees. Obviously, you probably saw this one coming. In this area right here, trees are probably going to be a little less common, but it doesn't mean they're gonna be nowhere. And a little trick you can do, at least with this entrance around the path, is make this tree sort of like an archway. Oh yeah, and also I'm doing this too, because it's cool. Not everywhere. I want the path to be like easily usable. That's something that you wanna keep in mind, especially if it's going to be a path someone uses often. You want it to be as easily usable as possible, unless you're literally just going for looks. However, sometimes looks and ease do sort of blend into the same thing, but not usually, to be honest. Now remember that this is not a tree building tutorial. I will have something like that in the future. I have one on my channel already, but I kind of don't like it, so uh, I would not recommend watching that, to be honest. Anyways, last step. Rocks. Now rocks are super easy to make. All you really gotta do is this. Even that, that's a bit overboard. Now ro even though rocks are easy to make, it does not mean that they are easy to make really well. 
walls, by the way, are really good for building rocks. They give a lot of shape. Oh yeah, and mixing in cobblestone, by the way, is good too. Not too much though, because too much cobblestone would be too much. I don't know where I was going with that. I mean, it's kind of obvious, yeah. You can see right here, this is probably the nicest rock in this whole area, which is pretty impressive. But while I'm not very great at building rocks, they are also not very difficult to build. You can see you can build small ones very quick and very easily. It's not nearly as hard as some people think it might be. And while it's not easy as I probably think it would be, it's definitely not difficult and shouldn't be difficult for anyone. However, if you really just want to go with small rocks, just snag some stone buttons and uh, throw them around. Oh, also, it is it is a good idea to use all of them. The big ones are for like rare cases and one for a little bit of extra detail, by the way. You could scour those around. But other than maybe putting a little bit of podzel and coarse dirt around rocks, there is pretty much nothing else you, I can teach you about detailing with this. This being terrain. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Have a good time, and I hope this uh, I hope this helped.